because our sample sizes are so large, it's going to detect very minuscule residual correlations that really don't deserve to be factored into their own factor. And I'll get to uh, the partial confirmatory factor analysis solution to this problem in a minute. Here's the pattern matrix. And we can see that there, the first factor is vocabulary with some large factor loadings associated with that uh, analysis, with the analysis. So we've got vocabulary 4, which is as big as 0.948 factor loading on the first factor. And then we have these uh, non-salient loadings that are all very close to zero. Then in the second factor, we've got uh, factor loadings going from negative 0.927 to negative 0.77 and these are associated with the intersections uh, factor. The fact that these loadings are negative is actually arbitrary. Uh, the factor analysis needs to produce factor loadings of one particular sign, either positive or negative, and it really just does it on an in an arbitrary way. And so in this case it's produced one factor with negative factor loadings. Now in the third factor we have loadings that are actually positive and they're all associated with the arithmetic. And they're very large and positive. Now, the non-salient loadings are all rather small in the context of arithmetic. So vocabulary and intersections has very small loadings. And I'm going to get back to these loadings in a minute in terms of actually performing a partial confirmatory factor analysis. You can ignore the structure matrix. And here's the factor correlation matrix. So the, the direct Oblomin rotation solution has in fact identified correlations that are moderate in magnitude. And we can see that the correlation between factor 2 and 3 is actually negative, uh, which might be perplexing because in cognitive ability type tests, usually there's a positive manifold, which means all the subtests are correlated positively. And that was in fact observed based on the correlation matrix that was outputted. Uh, but the this might be surprising to people to see a negative correlation. But this negative correlation between factor 2 and 3 is simply a byproduct of the fact that SPSS produced a fa the second factor with negative loadings. So when you correlate negatively loaded, uh, a negatively loaded factor with a positively loaded factor, a negative correlation actually means a positive association between these two constructs. So just to repeat, when you have differentially directed loadings between two factors, then a negative correlation between those two factors means a positive association between the constructs associated with those factors. So in this case here, all the correlations are actually positive. And you can just reflect those uh, in your report if you wanted to report these results. Now, now that I've looked at the factor solution, the first thing that I want to do in a partial confirmatory factor analysis is make use of the KMO Bartlett's test sphericity chi-square value, which is equal to a whopping 7018.828, which is to be expected, and degrees of freedom of 105, and the goodness of fit chi-square value of 213.866. And what I'm going to do is use these chi-square values to get partial confirmatory factor analytic index values, which correspond exactly to the uh, close fit index values that you see in confirmatory factor analysis studies. So in this case here, the norm fit index has a formula that includes the null model chi-square as well as the implied model chi-square, which is then divided by the null model chi-square. Now in this formula, this null model chi-square corresponds to the the goodness of fit test statistic chi-square, which is 213.866. So I just have to put 213.866 in this part of the formula, as well as in the denominator part of, part of the formula. And the, um, uh, oh, sorry, I just made a mistake. That should be the implied, sorry. This 213.866 corresponds to the implied model chi-square, not the null model chi-square. So it's this section here. 213.866 corresponds to the implied model chi-square, and it's always smaller than the null model chi-square. The null model chi-square corresponds to Bartlett's test of sphericity up here. Where did it go? 
Ah, there it is. Bartlett's 